In this video, I'm gonna be comparing some of the various laser safety glasses or laser safety goggles that I have accumulated over time. I'm gonna be testing them all out on my LPM to see how much light is able to pass through each one at varying powers and wavelengths. And I'm also gonna throw a pair of dark sunglasses in there too, just for the hell of it, to see how much light will pass through those. So out of the six pairs of glasses I have here, I have the dark pair of sunglasses, the generic red lens laser safety glasses that are typically mass produced, I believe in China and sell for a couple of dollars. I have a pair of Wicked Lasers laser shades, rated OD5 for 190 through 380 nanometers and rated OD2 to 3 for 488 nanometers through 532 nanometers. I have an eagle pair of laser safety glasses OD5 rated 190 to 540 nanometers and 800 to 1700 nanometers. I have the generic blue lens uh, laser safety glasses also only a couple of dollars probably mass produced in China and then I have another eagle pair these are OD4 rated for 190 to 400 nanometer and 580 to 760 nanometer. So the LPM I'm going to be using is a LaserB A LPM. It's actually a discontinued model and it's a couple of years old, but I have babied this thing uh, through the entirety of the time I've had it and it's always given me very reliable readings. So I do have a good amount of confidence in it, but given that it is an older model and it does have some age on it, I am willing to maybe say there could be one to two milliwatts margin of error. Possibly. I don't know that. Just kind of throwing that out there as a disclaimer that this unit is an older model and I have had it for some time. But like I said, I have babied it through its life cycle and kept it in good shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys all the testings right now. And I'm going to show you guys the stats on the left hand side of what power and what wavelength I'm using. And I'm just going to quickly, it'll take a couple minutes, but I'm going to go through all of the different lasers. And I'm probably just going to play some background music during it. But what I'm also going to do is if you want to skip that part and just see the data at the end, you can go to this timestamp that's on the screen right now. Fast forward to that time and that'll be the chart right there. And at the end of the video, I'll kind of give my comments. I'm not really, it's not a review. I'm not going to tell you what glasses are better or worse. I'm just going to give you my comments based on the data that I got from this testing. So enjoy.
Alrighty, if you're still here, thank you for sticking around. Here is the chart full of that data as promised. These are all of the readings that we got from the testing I just did. And I'm going to kind of give a couple of comments based on what I saw. So first off, the dark sunglasses actually performed a little better than expected, especially with the 405 nanometer wavelengths. I wasn't detecting any light passing through, so that was pretty interesting. Now, with that being said, I would still never recommend sunglasses for an alternative to laser safety glasses in any situation. Always use the laser safety glasses when working with lasers. As you can see here, the sunglasses did not perform well with other uh, wavelengths and powers. Secondly, the Wicked Lasers laser shades, I got those secondhand, and I got them when I bought a Wicked Lasers Arctic from somebody, and I got the glasses with the Arctic, and I just kind of assumed that those were the glasses that came with the Arctic. But as I mentioned earlier, they were rated, it says right on the glasses, 190 through 380 milliwatts, OD5, and 488 nanometers through 532 nanometers, OD2 to 3. So that was kind of interesting. I'm not sure if they made other laser shades that were rated for 445 or 450 nanometer lasers. I just went ahead and put that pair of glasses through the ringer for all of the violet, blue, and green lasers. Um, because I just kind of assumed that these are the only ones and that they didn't make a separate pair for the Arctic, but I really don't know because these laser shades are not new. They're a couple years old, and I got them secondhand. So I do want to say that, um, but they did perform well with the blue lasers. They didn't really have any issues. So that was kind of interesting. The third comment I want to make is regarding the DPSS lasers, diode pump solid state lasers, and I had used two in this testing, and they kind of posed a challenge because as many folks know who have worked with DPSS lasers, they like to kind of bounce to different powers uh, based on the temperature and based on how long you've been using them and how long they've uh, kind of warmed up in the session. So keeping them at a stable power for this testing was kind of tough. Of the lasers on the top row, there were two that were DPSS. The 532 nanometer uh, was the laser 303, and I kept that one as close to 90 milliwatts as I could. And the 589 nanometer laser is a Dragon Lasers Spartan. Uh, that one I kept as close to 50 milliwatts as I could, but they could have been bouncing up and down a little bit during the testing because it's very hard to keep a DPSS at one solid power. Now, also regarding the DPSS, the Dragon Lasers laser has an IR filter, so there's no infrared light leaking. The 532 nanometer laser 303 does not have an IR filter. So, of that number that you're seeing under the 532 column, the sunglasses letting through 10, and then the light that was passing through the generic uh, safety glasses and through the Wicked Lasers safety glasses, that's very likely IR light. I could have done IR testing in hindsight. I maybe should have that. That's a whole nother video though, and I'm gonna do that with an IR pass filter and an IR uh, restricting filter to show you guys what light is passing through and what the goggles are filtering. But to make things short, those under the 532 column, all those numbers you're seeing there, those numbers are probably very heavily made up of infrared light. And the first three glasses, the sunglasses, the um, the generic pair and the Wicked Lasers pair are not advertised to block out the invisible infrared light entirely. On the other hand, the Eagle pair that I have listed there are advertised to block out infrared light, which is why they got such a good reading there. So the first three might have been blocking out the 532 nanometer green, but we're still getting a reading because that laser leaks out invisible infrared light. So that could be the reason why some of those numbers are so bad. And that's a whole nother video, like I said, and I actually will do that uh, to show you guys the infrared that comes from a laser 303. I've done a video similar to this in the past on my other channel, and I'll do one in the near future. Another comment I wanted to make is regarding the two pairs of generic laser safety glasses. I didn't include any specifications on those and what they're rated to protect because... Like I said, they're generic pairs that are mass-produced and sold by so many Chinese sellers, and it seems like the actual specifications on these are tough to determine. Uh, I don't necessarily have the testing capability and know how to uh, create specifications for them based on testing, but I just don't trust the specifications I'm getting from these various uh, Chinese eBay sellers. Some call them OD5 rated. 
and some call them less, so I really just don't trust those specifications a ton. With that being said, I put the red generic laser safety glasses through the ringer for the violet, blue, and green lasers, and then I put the blue generic laser safety glasses through the ringer for the yellow and red lasers. The red pair of glasses held up pretty well. Uh, as you can see right here, they performed across the board uh, without letting any light through, and with the 532 nanometer laser, the light that was allowed to pass through was very likely infrared light, uh, but that'll be a separate video. And with the generic blue laser safety glasses, they did not perform as well. With the 589, they let through 1 milliwatt. With the 638, they let through uh, 3 milliwatts. And with the 650 nanometer laser, they let through 32 milliwatts of power. Uh, visible light through the glasses so they did not do a good job at all if you ever see those generic blue laser safety glasses paired up in a bundle with the 650 nanometer laser stay away because they're not going to give you adequate protection so I only have a few more comments here thank you for anybody who has stuck around I know this is a little bit of a longer video for me but I have a lot of comments to make about the testing that I did here so you might be wondering why you didn't see any one watt or higher lasers in this testing I found that when I started doing the testing, I had a couple 1 watts in there. I had my Thor laser, which I believe is 1.2 or 1.3 watts, and I focused the beam out as much as I could. I made it uh, probably close to an inch in length, but it was still kind of leaving little etch marks on my glasses, not like lighting them on fire or anything, but when you have a 1 watt laser that's within 6 inches to a foot away from your glasses and it's just staying on one point on the glasses like that for an extended period of time, uh, more than a couple of seconds, it, it leaves little etch marks, it leaves little damage on the glasses. Now light wasn't passing through, it was blocking the light, but it was also damaging my glasses and I didn't want that. This wasn't a video uh, intended to push these glasses to the limit and destroy them, so I left the 1 watt lasers out of it uh, in the interest of my glasses and not leaving etch marks all over the lenses. And in reality, in a real world scenario where you're wearing these laser safety glasses and working with a laser, you're wearing the glasses to protect yourself from maybe a one to two second beam reflection off of a mirror, or maybe you accidentally turned the laser on when you didn't realize it was on. Uh, in a real world situation, you're never going to be aiming the laser directly at your eye with the glasses on for 10 seconds or more. So that's kind of why I left the one watt lasers out of this. So my final comment is in regards to the Eagle Pair glasses. I believe I already mentioned that the Eagle pair, uh, 190 to 540 and 800 to 1700 OD5 uh, are a bit pricier. They're $65 and they're rated for infrared light as well as those visible spectrum of violet, green, and blue lasers. But if you take a look at the other pair of Eagle pair glasses I have here, the blue ones that are rated 190 to 400 nanometer and 580 to 760 nanometer, uh, there's a little disclaimer on the bottom about yellow lasers and that they got some reports of folks that said that these glasses were not very adequate for coverage of yellow lasers. And I did see a post on laser pointer forums from a user, it was years ago, I want to say maybe 2014 or 2015, that had this exact pair of glasses and said that he had light passing through. And if I can find that post on laser pointer forums, I'll put a link to it down in the description below. So they took these reports from this user or multiple users that light was passing through, and they developed another pair of glasses, the ones that you're seeing right here. The same price, but these glasses are rated from 560 and up, and they specifically call out in the description coverage of yellow lasers. However, these only go up to 640 nanometers, so you would not be able to use these for 650 nanometer red lasers. I bought the first pair that I showed you uh, because they said that the coverage starts at 580 and goes all the way past 650, um, and I wanted a pair that covered my yellow and my red lasers. And I have tested these glasses out multiple times with my 589 Spartan, and I've never been able to get a reading. It always reads zero milliwatts. Now, if you look at this photo here, yes, there is some yellow visible light that is passing through the glasses and hitting the LPM, but I can never get this to meter at anything above zero milliwatts. So I'm not overly concerned using these with my yellow laser because even if there was a mishap and some light was able to hit the glasses directly, um, I, I wouldn't even be getting one milliwatt of laser power. Uh, maybe down the road I'll get that pair and test them out to see if they're any better and if they block out all of the visible light for my yellow laser. Uh, but I did just want to make that one distinction. They do have the two pairs, and if the pair that I have currently is not adequately uh, 
created for yellow lasers, maybe they should make the rating on them 600 and up instead of 580 and up. Because I do find it interesting that these start at 580, yet they do specifically call out in the description that these may not be effective for yellow lasers. And if you have a yellow laser, you might want to look at the other pair. Um, if you don't want people buying these for yellow lasers, maybe you just start the specifications at 600 nanometers and up. Uh, but those are all my comments on all of this. I'd love to know what you guys think of all the data I've presented to you guys and all the findings I have. Let me know in the comments below and we'll get a conversation going on what we found in this video. If you found this video interesting or helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for more amazing laser content just like this. And as always, thank you for watching.